the bay's gotten a lot dirtier. There's a lot more algae blooms and a lot more sedimentation. I've seen the bay when I was a teenager. Uh, in the summer in the bay, it would be very common to have visibility 12 or 15 feet, even 25 or 30 feet in some places. Now you're lucky if you can see down a foot. As we learn more about what causes our bay to degrade, we're going to learn more about what will fix it. And I think that's what our oyster program here is helping to do. So all these shells are full of barnacle, but it's also good for the spat as well. So, so Chris, you want to be the counter in chief? <laughs> sure. Maryland Department of Natural Resources has a really effective uh, oyster gardening program called Marylanders Grow Oysters. And what they do is they recruit waterfront property owners that have piers or something, and they provide them with baby oysters or oyster spat, and they hold them in trays under their pier for a year, and the oysters grow, and the citizens go out and they take care of those. And then once a year, Maryland DNR picks those oysters up, takes them to a sanctuary area, puts them on the bottom while they will, where they will create this wonderful, diverse oyster ecosystem. The main issue in the Potomac River estuary, in my opinion, is nutrients. That means high algal blooms floating on the water. That sinks, it causes low dissolved oxygen, which we also call hypoxia or anoxia. So we're hoping that with our research on the potential for aquaculture of oysters to reduce the symptoms of water quality health by taking them out of the water body through filtration. Our oyster hatchery here, like most other hatcheries, we can control the temperature here and we can get oysters to be ready to spawn pretty much whenever we want them to. Once they spawn, we collect the eggs, we fertilize the eggs, we grow the larvae in large tanks and it takes two to four weeks from the time the eggs are spawned and turn in from a larvae, a swimming larvae, into a spat. Those spat have to go into some kind of a structure that is held under the pier. Maryland has a cooperative program with the inmates in Hagerstown at one of the prisons and they actually provide the manpower to build the cages. Why am I building oyster cages? Well, to re replenish the bay and come in here and put them together. We do approximately uh, two, two pallets a day, about 130 cages. We have several guys working on them. They have different stages. When they get bored of doing one area, we switch them to another area. That way nobody gets monotonous about their own jobs, you know, so it goes pretty smoothly, really. What it does is provide a lot of our inmates for valuable work and a chance to contribute to society. So we think we're, we're doing that. We make these, these for the Department of Natural Resources. They pay us, our inmates, for working on these. And that money goes back to pay the inmates, uh, pay our salaries, pay our trucks to deliver them. Uh, we're totally self-supporting. This all started by a uh, flyer we had seen in the mailbox, which originally it was going to be four cages. I said we can take more than that, eight, and then it grew to ten. So we've run t ten cages for the past two years. It's purely volunteer. So the biggest thing for us is we have to make sure we're down here every, every two weeks and uh, do the oyster shaking. Being down here, we just we love the area. And we know the Chesapeake Bay is challenged with keeping water quality up. We know the oysters are challenged because uh, they've dropped off so much over the years. And we thought this was our way of maybe giving back a little bit. It's not just the oysters that are filtering. It's the community that the oyster themselves generate. Lots of things come and live around oysters. Many of them are also filter feeders. So when we talk about the filtering capacity of oysters, what we really should be talking about is the filtering capacity of the community that develops because we've put oysters out there.